All right, guys, we are back here with another episode of Pound for Pound. I am the Nigerian Nightmare, Kamaru Usman. Henry Cejudo, a.k.a. Triple C. A Shot of Lime production. Today we have a special guest, a man that will be gracing us with his presence in the Octagon next weekend at the Sphere. A uh, man that needs no introduction. The most colorful man right now in the Octagon. One of the most dynamic, and uh, you know, right now the current bantamweight champion of the world, Sugar Sean O'Malley. O'Malley, boys, you guys know I'm a very, very busy man. I'll keep this short. I came here for two reasons: one, to praise you, Kamaro, you're an absolute legend, and two, Henry, how'd you let Aljo take you down so easy? <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. Oh shit! Did we lose him? First and foremost, um, I think he did no, that. Sean, hey, he got Sean. us! Hey, he got us, Kamaru. He didn't just do that to me. He did that to for, us. Hey, but first of all, Sean O'Malley is going to be fighting Marab Dulashvili next weekend at the Sphere. This is a, a humongous event. This has kind of been built up as that, and and I expect it to deliver. Right now, Sean is 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 one of the guys that I really love to watch. I really love to follow right now in MMA because he's he's one of those young guys, the newer generation of guys that just knows how to completely just he he's rolling with the punches of everything that's happening. Yeah, I, I don't think you get what I'm telling you, Kamaru. Like he's trolling us. He came on here just to do that, and he's out. <laughs> that's hey he, he's, hey, i guess no, he said no, what no he, fucking praise him after all i that. guess well i guess he said what he needed to say and he and he's out so if that's <laughs> if that's what he needed to say then that's what he that's what he said but he's can out. i but can i tell you something but, I, I thought about this too like once he once he loses to marab because I, I do believe he's going to lose to marab fucking the, the next fight that's that's up is me and him you know like davis is going to fight peter yon uh, Umar's already fighting for the belt. The only dude that's really left in that whole division is myself. You know what I'm saying? It's be the, the next best thing is going to be me. You know, yeah. Granted, um, I, I've lost to I lost to the you know to the former champion. I lost to the soon to be pending world champion. But what can, what what can we say, dude? I think it's uh, you know I think after this fight, I, I know that Marab is going to get this win. I know a little bit of uh, of O'Malley's fight camp and how it's been going. And I think he's fucking back. I I still, if I had to pick on uh, which side I'm leaning, I just think Sean is very... Uh, Marab Dilashvili is completely, undeniably relentless with his attacks and trying to get his hands on you and drag you down and just beat on you. But Sean O'Malley, if there is a guy that can evade and be able to find his shot, I think it's Sean O'Malley. But Henry, uh, yeah, we just dealt with a little bit of um, some difficulties there. Actually, actually, at the beginning, I was like, "Really, Sean's really gonna come out?" But he's like all these other YouTubers, Kush. You know, they want to, They want to get the sound bite. I think. I think he's still hurt when I call them precious. You know, a lot of the names that I've been calling. Them, hey, precious. Hey, Sean. I need a tune to roll the damn tape. I think he's still a little. I think he was shook. I think. I think at that time, like, I. I literally became public enemy number one. So I'm not surprised. I figured some things like this were going to happen. But you know what I love about it, though, too, Kush? Is the fact that he loses this fight with Marab Devalisvili. I do believe, and I, and I am planning on going to flyweight. Unless, unless, so I'm going to make it public here, too, guys. I am planning on going to flyweight. I started my diet. I'm going to do everything right. And the only reason why I even want to do that, because the more disciplined that I have to become, the more I gotta pretty much, you know, reach, you know, reach that new height of of discipline. But there's one fight, and I'm gonna go back to this. I think the the the, the fight between me and Sean O'Smelly, Ronald McDonald makes a lot of sense, dude. And I think we can do it here in Phoenix. And that's the only fight at 135 pounds, and that would give me quicker to the title shot at 135 pounds. So I would still love that. But that being said, he doesn't know how to get off of bottom. He's having trouble. I've had training partners. I have three training partners that have gone out there. That's all told me the same shit. Just like when I'm injured, he always knows. He's tuned out. I was like, hey, when I lost to Marab Devalas Billy, he knew that I was injured. You know, that's 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 what happens when you live in the same city. Is people people know other people that will say shit. So he knew that my groin was torn. He didn't go back and look at the Twitters. He's 
Or you can go back and look at when I lost to Murab. He's like, hey, man, that wasn't Henry. Henry was, and you know, Henry had a torn groin. And obviously, you, you knew Kamaru. But that being said, dude, I think I think it's a, it's a match made in heaven for a guy like Marab. He just needs to be he just needs to be careful in those two rounds. And as the fight goes on, I could see Marab Devaz really fucking taking him out. <laughs> That's a lot said there. Uh, but as far as as going into, uh, am this, I a snitch? Is my am I a snitch, Kamaru? But no, I I I Henry, I would have to. Based on the what I've seen from Sean, he just fought a five round fight. He took Cheeto Vera to five rounds and was still piecing him up all throughout the whole fight. As much as I love Cheeto, he just did put his best foot forward and and Sean had his way. And I understand on I, his I, feet. I can, no, no yes, grappling. That it's, yes, it's, might as well fight Muay Thai. Okay, but would you consider Aljamain Sterling one of the best grapplers in that that one of the top grapplers in that? Bantamweight slash a featherweight division. Uh yeah, yeah. He's he's proven that he's been able to take. Yes, and Aljamain and Aljamain couldn't get him down, and he was able to find that shot with Aljamain. Before that, before that, had we ever seen Aljamain sniped with a good shot like that? Really, never seen that. And he was able to find that shot. Now you're you're comparing that to a guy like Marab, who Marlon Marais found the shot. You found a good shot against them. You don't think Sean O'Malley will be able to find that shot? He he can. I mean, well, and that's the key for him. Could he find that shot early and put him out? But if he doesn't, yeah, I will say this, and that will give Sean credit in that sense. He is a sniper. He is super long, but I just don't see him. And I I just don't see unless Marab gets crazy, unless he says what he says he's gonna do and stay on his feet, then that's just not gonna be good for him. You know, because Marab, I think Marab's greatest weapon, I mean, I think Sean's greatest weapon now is, is, is that knee. It's the same knee that he caught uh, Chilo Vera with. All the other stuff is just like sniping, but his movement gets him tired, things like that. But regardless, if he is able to, if, if, more likely, the probability is, I'm, I'm hoping this motherfucker loses. <laughs> because now there's a okay, show, well, yeah. because now so there's well, a showdown we... between me and him. And you know what? We can settle it the best way, and that's fighting. That's doing it yes. here in our city. Who's the who's the king of AZ? You no, know, we can we can get down, dude. That, that's all there is to it. But like I said, Kush, I go back yeah. and I tell you this. Like I had a feeling he was gonna pull some shit like that because he's just hurt, dude. Because I went in deep on his ass, you know, well, from, from I, calling I, him out. Like you, know, you can see all my tweets, you can see all well, my shit that I've done. Well, so so okay, so I I, I wasn't obviously wasn't that aware of of all of that, but I could see it because. When you're in the mix, when you're, like I've said, I've said it countless times, when you're in the mix, you're an artist and you're going to be sensitive about what you're doing. You're going to be sensitive about your crap. <laughs> and so when someone starts continuously throwing salt in the game like that, yes, you're going to take offense in some way, shape, form, or fashion. So I see it. I completely see it now. If that's what you've been doing to him all along. So, of course, he came on here just to do that. And I wasn't aware of that. I mean, I... I I, I like the kid. I think he's one of the better. I think he's one of the 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 leaders of the way of this new rev, wave of guys that are coming in with him, Ilya Taporia. We can have all these bull nickels, all these young guys that are eventually going to turn into superstars. So yeah, but what do you say? I, mean, I didn't like are we that. Chop, are we chop liver now, dude? What's up? Are you? Are you? Are you? We're not chop liver, but I think we 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 took the game to a, a, a different level. You had guys like the 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 Horse Gracie and the, and the Shamrocks that came in and they revolutionized the sport. And then you had guys like the Rampage Jackson, the Shogun, and the, the Rashad Evans that came in and they 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 showed you a different side of the sport as well. And then you had guys like yourself, myself, DC, and, and these guys that came in and, and changed it. Now you have a, a new wave of guys like the Sean O'Malley, the Ilya Taporia, you know that that come in. And and they get their turn. Obviously, I, I you know names like Volkanovski, Israel Adesanya. All these are big, big names as well. But then you get guys like him that come in. This is a new wave that we're seeing. And so when you're there, we all know you're sensitive about what you're doing. When someone starts talking or, or poking fun or trying to poke throw stones at your glass <laughs> your, at your house, you're gonna feel a certain type of way. So. I get it. I don't like the fact that that just took place because I really had some questions that I wanted to ask him. I wanted to know how his fight camp was going. I wanted to know how he's, uh, 
how he's preparing for uh, what's his name, Marab, because like you said, you 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 you're one hundred percent sold. You think Marab is gonna get it yeah. done? Yeah, Marab. If Marab is able to just right here keep his keep his hands up, like that's all you have to do, Marab. That's all. That's pretty much it. Yeah, he's gonna fatigue himself. Trust me, dude. I've studied this dude. This dude be watching my breakdowns too. Um. You know, he's going to fatigue himself because he'll punch, 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 punch. A lot of the movement that he does do, like he doesn't, he still doesn't have that five-round threshold, in particular when it comes to actually grappling. Remember, Kush, I, I'm good at some of this shit. Yeah, some of these times I do get it wrong, but when it comes to my actual division, okay, right. I, I really study the game, but it's what it is, man. I think I think trolling, I, I would have loved to have gone on there and really kind of debated him without having a motherfuck, uh, 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 you know, w w one another. <laughs> But it's <laughs> it's what it is, dude. Wow. I think I think uh, I think Sean just like I'm gonna give you an example, dude. And I get it. I get why he's all pissed. He was like, "Yeah, Henry Cejudo only has twenty dollars to his name." He's like, "Well, I had I actually have twenty. I actually have twenty seven. I used to have twenty nine once I got done with your girl." <laughs> so this so this is some of the trolling that I was doing. Obviously, it's all fun in games, you know. But I can see where a lot of this shit just, you know, fucking tugged his heartstrings. So I get it. But anyways, we'll have we'll have his opponent Marab on the show uh, a little bit later. But first, Henry, let's. I want to get through the breakdown of this card. It's going to be a fantastic card. Dana had, and everyone and their mom has said this that it's going to be fantastic. It's a first. Uh, I think he said Dana said it's one and done. This is the first time it's ever going to be done at the Sphere, and and so this is it. And so, and obviously, let's not forget, they're also going up against Canelo Alvarez and and um, Edgar uh, Berlanga in that fight, which which will be taking place at the T-Mobile, and this will be taking place at the Sphere. So this is going to be a, a fantastic weekend in Vegas. But let's get, let's get, let's get through this card. Right now, we already, of course, the main event, uh, Sean O'Malley taking on uh, Marab Dulashvili. We already know that's going to be a fantastic fight. And Henry, based on your breakdown, you said that all Marab has to do is go here and just pressure him and let Sean O'Malley punch himself out. I personally think it'll be a little different. I think Sean O'Malley has shown that he can go five. But of course... In order to be, I think there's room to maybe fatigue him if you're able to get him down, make him work to get back up to his feet. Um, I think Marab does definitely has a chance because we all know at the end of the day, the one, the greatest equalizer in a fight is fatigue. Fatigue makes cowards of us all, every one of us. And so if Marab is able to go in there, impose his will, put on that pressure, and is able to get uh, Sean O'Malley to punch himself out. I think Marab does has a, a good chance of winning this. But personally, if I had to pick, I love Marab. But Sean O'Malley has shown me all the signs of him uh, being the superstar and continuing on that quest. So I'm going to go with Sean O'Malley on this fight. Henry, we don't even need to ask you. We yeah, already know no, you I got, at. I got, I got Marab Dallas Davalas Villa by stoppage, dude. Maybe in the later fourth, or, yeah, maybe of like fourth or fifth round, maybe even the fifth, dude. Um, yeah, he's going to be relentless on him. I think as the later the fight goes on, you know, fuck, dude, I wish I could run this shit back with Marab because I really wanted him to get me 100%, but he, he has a fucking gas tank, dude. And I just think, uh, but but if he doesn't keep his hands up, if he doesn't keep his hands up, he's, you know, he's going to get put out, dude. Like, like if, if he gets stupid with his hands, I think right. the, the biggest caution is going to be that first round. That so first your pick, round. okay, here's your pick, Henry, your pick. So Marab Devalis Billy. We got underdog picks coming through. So Marab Devalis Billy. Let's let's say fourth to fifth round stoppage, one hundred percent. I got, got him by stoppage. Fourth round. Okay. Yeah. So it's okay. gonna be. So once the stats come out, it's gonna be. I'm gonna go lower on fight time for Marab Devalis Billy. Mm, okay. Okay. You're, You're welcome. Away just yet. All You're right. Welcome. Now we're gonna move on to our co-main event of the evening. We've got <laughs> the champion. Women's flyweight champion, we've got Alexa Grasso and Valentina Shevchenko. These are two women that I, I love to watch. Two women are fantastic fighters. Great kind of in their approach to where Valentina, I feel, is a bit more of a complete stand-up fighter 
because she's got the spin kick. She got the spinning back fist. She's got the, the, the great southpaw, just a balanced attack of kicking and punching, has head kick knockouts, has complete grappling knockouts. Well, grappling finishes, not knockouts. Excuse me. But Alexa Grasso, I think, is just one of those fighters who is... And I'm just I'm such a big fan of Alexa because I remember actually meeting her when she first got after first getting into the UFC early on. And I think that was maybe 2015. And we were at the US uh the UFC Athlete Summit, I believe. Was that 2015? 16. 2016. 2016, yes. And we were at the Athlete UFC Retreat. Athlete Retreat. And I had an opportunity to spend some time with her, just talk to her and, and get to know her a little bit while we were waiting. For, I think we were go, headed to the airport or something. But yeah, that's when I just realized like she she's she's always had excellent boxing, but over the time she starts to put the jujitsu and the grappling with it, and you can see it in her fights. Her improvement just vast, continuously just improve each and every fight to where taking out someone like Valentina Shevchenko, which. At one point, me and Valentina was was battling for who were gonna be the first to get all the rubies around our belts because we were we were defending and defending and defending. And Alexa Grasso came through and she spoiled the party. So this is a fantastic fight. This is a, the third time they will be fighting. The last one ended in a draw, and so I think this one they they they. I, I'm looking at a finish. I think one of these girls is definitely gonna have to to go for broke to potentially get that finish to just stamp this and solidify it and end this rivalry. What do you think, Henry? Yeah, I think, uh, I think the person that really needs to make the adjustment, Alexa's not going to change. She's super right. heavy right. on her feet. She's got heavy hands. The person that really has to make this, that makes, that has to make the adjustments and play the lateral game. A lot of what Rose did with Tracy Cortez is Valentina. You know, could Valentina do use the lateral movement, use a little bit of her experience to really just point fight her. But the more that the more that Alex is able to stalk her and press her and do X, Y, and Z, the more that the fight's probably gonna go more towards the Alexa Brussels side. But if Valentina Shashenko could make those adjustments uh through movement and very and make it very problematic for the heavy stance boxer, I think I, I think it should fall on the line of Valentina. So but if she fights the same fight, if she fights if she fights Alexa Grasso, this uh, the same, you know, if she allows Alexa Grasso to kind of press it and take, get, get, you know, keep it on the feet, then then you got to go with the heavy hitter. But I think I think Valentina's too smart, dude. I think uh, I think I, I, I'm kind of edging out Valentina just because just based on movement and based on uh, you know her experience, but could she do it? And obviously too, Kush, it's September, it's September 14th through Mexican Independence Day. I felt like I felt like Valentina won that last fight. I don't know where that judge got the 10-8 round, but I was able to screw Valentina to give it a draw. But it is what it is, and it's what it is, too. But I think if, if there's anybody that I might have to favor, I'm probably going to favor Valentina Shevchenko. Hmm. I, I don't see too much changing in this fight because I think Alexa Grasso continues to do her thing. I think she continues to – she has very, very quick hands, quick combination, and she knows now that I can hurt Valentina enough – to close the distance to get a hold of her and she showed her grappling is is a is a one now to where back in the day i would consider valentina having the edge in the grappling for this if i had to pick i'm i'm, I'm gonna go with i'm gonna lean towards alexa grasso staying a champion here in, the, in a split decision what do you think Henry? yeah well i i'm you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna go vice versa man i think if valentina can make those adjustments because she is the fighter and the person that actually has to make those adjustments if she can use again it's all a corner she can stick to the game plan if she can use those lateral those lateral movements to be able to touch and, and tap and pretty much point five because it's not like valentina has crazy power either and then eventually go in there and sneak in those takedowns like she has been i can see i can see her may potentially win this fight by decision but if she does allow alexa to just stock i think i think alexa's at that point where she's already been in there with valentina a couple of times so she knows that Valentina really can't hurt her with the hands, but she does need to be careful with the takedowns. The person that needs to make the adjustments, if she does follow that game plan because she's a lot more gifted, I'm going to have to go with Valentina's shift shankle by decision. Okay, so 
You know, Henry, it, all, it is also Mexican Independence Day, so... And that's what you got to be careful. And that's what you got to be careful. I don't know what careful. you're trying to say, bro. My brother, I don't know what you're trying to say. <laughs> but now we move on to the next fight. We've got Brian Ortega taking on Diego Lopez. This is a fight that was originally scheduled earlier this year. But unfortunately, Brian Ortega was out due to illness. And Diego Lopez, like a gangster, took chose to take on somebody. And not just anybody. Took on the man, 50K, Dan Ige. On a couple hours' notice, then was able to get the decision on that. That's that if that's not gangster, I don't know what is. And there's only a few, a few people that I know that are willing to take risks like that. And those people usually end up at the top. And so this fight right, right here, if v, Diego Lopez is able to get in there and take out a veteran, a guy as experienced and as tough as Brian Ortega, I think Diego Lopez finds himself on the short list of challengers who will be challenging for that featherweight title. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, so so what, what are you saying? So you think Diego's going to edge it out? It is a three-round fight, which is is, is a sprint. It's, it's tough to to decide, but I, I think, yes, I, I think Diego can I think Diego can pull it out because I think he, he, he just continues to get more and more confident in in his abilities the more fights that he's able to get underneath him but in that last fight i think for someone like brian ortega it was actually even better because brian ortega now got a chance to sit back and see how diego lopez fared through throughout that fight and dan Ige was coming on strong towards the end of that fight so i think if anything it gave brian ortega a little bit more confidence knowing that hey if I could weather the storm early, I could potentially sw do some uh, switch up on this guy later on in later rounds and get him out of there. But I'm gonna go with Diego Lopez. I think he's uh, I think he's just it's a three round fight, and I think it's a sprint, and I think he's just a little bit more more youthful, and I think he'll he might be able to yeah, you but, know, pull yeah, off but, a split decision. Yeah, but 33 years old, dude. I feel like 33 is your freaking prime. That's the center of your prime. I agree, so, but Brian uh, Ortega has been in there for a long time. He's no, he's no young pup. He's a veteran inside that. Yeah, outfit. but the, yeah, but there's there's also something about Brian now, kind of you know, uh, you know, finding faith, and uh, you know, getting back with his family. Obviously, you know, we were connected at one point because he was dating Tracy Cortez, so I had a chance to really be around him. And it looks like he's, a, he looks like he's in a good point in his life where he really wants to do things for the, you know, for the love of God, dude. So I think that makes a fighter dangerous, dude. I mean, who would I want to win? I would say Diego Lopez because obviously, you know, I like him. I know both of these cats. I mean, probably, I don't know if Brian still likes me. I don't know. But stylistically. Why would Brian not like you? <laughs> I don't know. That whole Tracy Cortez thing. I don't know what happened. What but... did you have to do with that? You ain't, you ain't <laughs> nothing to do with that, right? No, but you know how sometimes we have friends and there's a breakup, breakup right, to makeup. Right, like right. it's just, you know what I'm saying? Like you just don't right. know. Like I have no ir no ill will, but I will say this about Brian: he's skilled, man. I mean, Absolutely. he's only he's he's only lost to he's only lost to Volkanovski, and he's and, and he's only lost to really Max Holloway. Max. The time that he did lose to Yair Rodriguez, it was because of that that you know he ended up you know he had to get uh, sh shoulder he hurt his sh shoulder, but then he got that one back, didn't he? But then he got it back, and I I do believe that he's going to bring the wrestling in. And I think I, I can see him just catching the victory just based on wrestling. And this is not this is this is nothing against uh, Diego Lopez or anything like that because I would I would love for him to win. But if you're asking me, more likely who's favorite to maybe possibly win this fight? I mean, you, I, I gotta go with the vet dude and Brian Ortega, man. I like it. I like it. I think you you hit something the nail on the head there. Brian Ortega definitely is a veteran inside that octagon, and he he has a lot of ways to win. And I just I I'm I'm just going off of just activity here and just the youth and as aggressive as Diego Lopez has been. That's that's just the only reason I, I I edge him out here in this fight. But this is a very, very good fight. Both guys are are very dangerous. Both guys can end the fight, whether it's striking or whether it's grappling. So this is probably the fight that I this is gonna be my fight of the night to watch. This is what I'm 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 very, very excited about. Obviously, the main event is well and co-main, but this fight right here, I really have my eyes on. But then we're moving on to the next fight. We've got Esteban Rebovich. 
And that's the Argentinian actually trains down here in South Florida at Kill Cliff. And I get a chance to watch this guy train and man, can this guy kick. And he's taking on Daniel Zelhuba, Zelhuber, Zelhuber. Zelhuber, who is 15 and one. It is Mexico versus Argentina. Ah, uh, man, this is a, this is a fantastic fight. This is a very, very good fight. Oof. Henry, what are you thinking? They're both young. They're both aggressive. They're both youthful. Esteban coming off that crazy, that, that, that highlight reel knockout. Man, this is a, this is a fantastic fight right here, Henry. Yeah, what it is. I, 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 yeah, I think if there's a fight of the night, it might be this one, dude. Might be this one. Might be, yeah, so? it might be this one. Yeah, because I know the Argentina comes out swinging, but I also know too that, you know, Daniel is, he's, he's very motivated. And he's very big for that weight class to his limbs. And he's gotten better. I know that they've invested a lot of money in him. Uh, you know, a big shout out to Cesar from out of, Cesar Gomez out in uh, Mexico. And, you know, he's been giving these guys like the best, the best of the best, you know, traveling from traveling to nutrition uh, to getting him a house out there. So I just feel like, yeah, he does have one loss, but I think he can make that up. Dude. I just, I got, I got Daniel winning. I don't know how it's going to end up. I think it might go decision because I can't count that Argentinian out, but I got uh, Zel Huber winning by uh, by decision or potentially knockout. I'm gonna go the other way. I'm gonna go with Esteban watching this guy train and watching this a uh, 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 young man just kind of come into his own. I think the good thing and the big thing about him that maybe a lot of people might not see yet is is what I do watch him train with with his coaches. Uh, shout out to Sean Soriano and Henry Hoof. In his striking coaches down here in Kilcliffe. And they they really pour into him to to finish his combinations. And the good thing with him is he can, he has kicks that come out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. And when I say nowhere, I mean out of nowhere. He throws combinations to where you normally won't see a kick, where a kick shouldn't happen, but somehow he's able to get the leg up there. It's like Austin Powers Gold members where the feet just come up out of no, <laughs> nowhere and wrap around your neck. So... I'm going to go with him here on this fight. I think Esteban gets it done. Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm going to go with this. Could be potentially a knockout here. Yeah, but moving yeah. on, we go to our next fight. Ronaldo Rodriguez taking on O'Day Osborne. This is a big fight as well. So this, is a, uh, this fight has implications. O'Day Osborne had some momentum there, but then he was, I believe, was stopped by, um, I forget who it was, in his uh, last fight. Yes. Okay, so he's Jamaican, man. You going for Jamaica? What's up, he come on? Come on, you're gonna fight. go. No, I, I haven't <laughs> picked the guy yet. Can a brother? Can a brother pick? Jesus. But Odell Osborne is, is coming off two losses here. He's looking to get back on the horse here, and and that's dangerous when a guy has his back up against the, the wall like that. It's dangerous for him to go in and 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 fight because he knows I need to get a win here. So. I'm looking for him to do whatever he needs to do to get the win. But, man, Rodriguez. Rodriguez is a powerhouse. Is a powerhouse. Look at that. Submission. Doctor stoppage. Submission. And Ode Osborne has lost back-to-back -back fights by submission. So, we're going to be looking for a grappling affair here for, for Ronaldo uh, uh, Rodriguez. He's, also, he's definitely looking to get this fight to the ground and use his grappling to potentially get the submission. But if I had to pick... I'm going to go with the upset here. I'm going to go with Ode Osborne for the upset. I think he could tick, 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 move around, move around, move around, keep the fight standing, and maybe scrape out a split decision. Yeah, well, I'm going to have to go for the... He's known as Lazy Boy, man. And I know this, this dude's got hands of his own. I can see him actually putting this... I can see him putting Osborne out. This dude's got hands, man. This dude was a sparring partner for David Haney. Uh, I've had a chance to work with him firsthand. The dude is the dude is good. And the other thing that you got to remember too, Kush, is he's fighting on Mexican Independence Day, dude. Oh, we, we, now we you want to know? Oh, now you seeing, know it's Mexican Independence Day. We might be Day. seeing ten six <laughs> rounds, you know, ten seven rounds, dude, for the Mexicans. So if I'm looking to win, and you know what? Because I, it seems like all of our picks are going to be opposite. Now we have to put an egg on the line, Kush. And don't what be do and don't and don't don't put your tongue between your legs, dude. I think because a lot of our fight card here is so different that I think the winner, the whoever picks more of the right opponents of actually winning, 
I think there should be a I think there should be a cracked egg on the line, dude. You know, best of best of five. Best of best five. Best of five. And okay, maybe me, okay. and maybe five eggs. What what's your take on that? Well, I love eggs, so I ain't wasting five eggs. You know, maybe one <laughs> before I put it on the stove. <laughs> crack it, you know, let it drip a little bit. Drip, drip, pause, <laughs> then put it on the stove. But right, okay, I'll, I'll think about that, Henry. I, I nah, like that. No, nah, we gotta I make like this that. fun, dude. I, I think just underdog, feel, underdog would love it. Our producers would love it. I don't feel like there's great, there's great implications on the line here to put an egg on it. That's just that's so because that's 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 hardcore. Tracy Cortez was your was your was your partner. You you knew her for no, a long I'm not, time. No, I'm not gonna play this game no more, Kush. So, so is it a yes <laughs> or a no? Is it a yes or a no? And that's it. We're, we're moving on. No, nah, come on, uh, come on, feature, come on, dude. Feature prelims. Here we've got Irene Aldana, one of my favorite favorites as well. Uh, female fighter is this is and this. Oh man, this is a, this is a big one here. Irene Aldana taking on Norma Dumont. I just Irene's hands, I think, are are second to none in that division. She's got power. She's got great combination, and she's got that Mexican hard nosed fighter. She comes to fight. So I'm gonna go with Irene. I just don't think there's too many women that are that are that are taking her out. So I'm gonna go with Irene Aldana. Yeah, she's probably favored 100 percent just because of the hands. But if Norma could use a little bit of that movement, um, obviously she only has Norma only has two losses, dude. You know, she's a little shorter. Obviously, she's a little younger than Irene. And I know she's coming down from featherweight to bantamweight. It's going to be her first time cutting the weight. That's the only thing. I mean, I would I would, I would, would like to see a girl like Norma. You know, we've talked in the past. I think I've, I've been able to kind of even help her with this game plan uh, of, of really like, you know, using lateral movements to be able to, you know, to be able to make it problematic for, for people. She was going to come down to fight ready to train uh, in the past, but mm -hmm. it was never there. But she, she had the skills 100%. So you did you just say you would like to see Norma get to the victory <laughs> over Irena? Yeah, yeah, just because, uh, yeah, just because Jeez. we need, we, we, just because we need, we need new blood, dude, and and obviously need there's a new personal blood. It's Mexican Independence Day, bro. And there's and there's a connection here. You know what I'm saying? I, I, but yeah, but you're right, dude. Like Irene is maybe more likely. She is favored. She does have heavier hands, and if this girl plays into the game, then it's gonna be. It's not gonna be good for for a girl like 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 Norma. But if she's able to make the weight correctly and use her lateral movements, the same thing as. The same thing is what I'm saying because these are these are these are typically heavy strikers. Kamaru is they have a stable, you know what I mean. You gotta you gotta be able to beat that rhythm. But if Norma cannot do that, then it's gonna go on on Irene. But if she's able to do that, she you know she has hands of her own. She does. But I'm gonna go with you going with Norma. Sure. Okay, you're gonna go with Norma. I'm gonna go with <laughs> Irena or I, Irene. But I mean, I can see here. I can see what UFC. I can see what Mick Maynard, Sean Shelby, and Dana White and Hunter. I see what you guys did here. I'm looking through this card, and I'm looking through at some of these guys that you have on this card. Or some of these men and women you have on this on this fight card, and I'm going, okay, now I see what they did. You guys tried to put on a, a highlight reel of fights. You've got Ignacio uh, Bahumandez taking on Manuel Torres. You've got oh my, that's a banging fight. Banging fight. Another striker's delight. You've got Yasmin, who's one of my new favorites. One of my new favorites. I love watching this young lady fight. I mean, she is phenomenal fighter, phenomenal striker, just all around well-rounded fighter. So you've got her fighting as well. That's a banging fight. You've got freaking uh, Edgar. Edgar Berlanga? No, 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 not Edgar Berlanga. That's across the street, Henry. They they had <laughs> T-Mobile. That's across the street. They're fighting as well, taking on Kevin Borjas. And, of course, you've got first fight of the night. You've got, Ra uh, what is that, Raul Rosas Jr. is the first fight of the night. Taking on, my man only has one name. A.Q. Ali Tang. What? Yeah, we call him AQ out in our gym. I can't even pronounce oh, that a thing. Oh, this guy trains with you. Yeah, this guy trains out so, here. So, 
Okay, so let's break down this quick fight. This is the last one. Let's break that down. What do you think? You know Rosas is going to try to get a hold of you. He's going to try to get on your back, and he's going to try to put, end the fight. What are you thinking? Yeah, well, I think AQ could uh, if, if AQ can pretty much... Uh, a, I got AQ winning, so we can do that. How about that? How, how about okay. that for the egg? I got you. you. Know, I, 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 think I, the, I, th- I think the biggest thing is... Uh, no, I'm talking about overall, like everything. You know? Yeah. Uh, you know, if, if we can, if you know, Yuri got your picks, I got my picks. You know, I, I'll, I'll go for AQ. Whoever, whoever it is that wins the majority of our picks, just wins the freaking. You know, wins. You know, gets that. Uh, you know, gets a chance to watch the other person crack that, crack that egg on the head. So, <laughs> I'll, I'll go AQ, dude. I feel confident. Dude, the, dude's, the dude's ready, dude. I mean, he has right. a bunch I of mean... losses, but he's ready. <laughs> Why you had to throw that in there? Why you had to throw that in there? AQ, my man, I know you're going to have a great fight. Uh, Raul Rosas, I think, is a very dangerous opponent. But that just shows how stacked this card is. From start to, f- to finish, the UFC has stacked this card. And I think it's going to be a fantastic event. I can't wait to see what it's going to look like on screen when we're watching a- at home or even in the arena. So UFC 306, we will have Marab Dulashvili on with us later on in the show but first henry let's thank our sponsors at underdog fantasy the easiest place to play fantasy sports this is a big weekend in fight for fight fans all across the board because we've got of course at the sphere sean o'malley take it on marab dulashvili and then you got across the street you've got canelo alvarez my boy now you know taking on edgar berlanga of course underdog is hooking it up all week long today is more money monday all users will get two 20 percent profit boost boost tokens to use on their pick em entry so you know where to go underdog fantasy and as always their pick em game is as easy as choosing higher or lower on a variety of fighter stats just like takedown significant strikes knockouts or you even know, submissions. You know, Underdog is available in 30 plus states, including California, Texas, New York, and Florida. Use code P4P when you sign up to support the show. Click the link below to get started. Now, Henry, um, obviously, we, we we spoke with Edgar Berlanga and we spoke with Canelo Alvarez uh, last week. Judging by just now, you, we've kind of let that air out a little bit with we we saw them they were still deep into training we see the energy come through on screen to where even canelo his energy he's just chilling get ready to go back to training and he does the interview with us and then we have edgar berlanga who is i felt like he was kind of almost pacing he was he was ready to go the whole time so now you've got to see their 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 energies and you've kind of let it air out a little bit how are you feeling about that fight yeah, I mean, I like it, dude. I tell you what, man, Edgar Berlanga, he's he's looking he's looking good in shape, dude. But it's gonna take, ah, oh, man. I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing the, I wouldn't mind seeing the upset because he's you know he's a young he's a young cat. He's a B. He's from the Bronx, New York. I would love to see him, uh, but man, against a guy like Canelo, man, that's composed. That it, it's his day. I mean, it's like you know September September sixteenth is the biggest Mexican holiday. Like to us Americans. That think you know that think is Cinco de Mayo is like the biggest thing is like in Mexico it's it's what it is man it's their it's their actual Independence Day so the Canelo is just Canelo is just too he's he's just too experienced man but I hope I hope I hope I see we get I see I hope we see a good fight I would love for this fight to go the distance but completely just see a war man you know but Berlanga really hasn't been tested with the highest competition. And that's what kind of leads me more towards. I mean, there's, I mean, obviously Canelo. It's obvious that he's a huge favorite. Well, you don't know until you know, and it, it like we've mentioned, for a contender or for a challenger going into a fight with the champion, you don't know until you know. You have that that dream in your head, they have that big picture in your head of something that you think could come true. But it's it's still an illusion in your head until you go out there and you prove it to yourself and you prove it to everybody. So we're going to be looking for Edgar Berlanga to shock the world and prove that to himself, that he truly is the one to dethrone pound for pound King Canelo Alvarez. But I will be watching. I, I'm Henry, I'm going to be in Vegas. You're going to be in Vegas for that. So I, I don't know here. I'm torn whether I'm going to the UFC or whether I'm going to see Canelo. 
So I, I'm still kind of trying to figure out where I'm going to be at, but I will be watching both fights. I think it's going to be a phenomenal weekend. It's a fight fan's dream. And as always, you know, Vegas is fight capital of the world. So, hey, I'll be watching. Brought to you by Riyadh Season, UFC 306, Noche, at the Sphere, and Edgar Berlanga take it on Canelo Alvarez at the T-Mobile Arena. It's going to be a fantastic weekend, Henry. I'll be watching. Are you watching? Oh, I'll be there. Canelo, Berlanga, O'Malley, Delashvili, this weekend. Make sure you're tuned in. As always, I'm the Nigerian Nightmare, Kamaru Usman. Henry Cejudo, a.k.a. Triple C. Done. I think, I think it's limp. I think out. it's limp, Kush. I think it's limp. <laughs> I think it's limp. Pause. We out.